how to play the right side in pickleball. A lot of people want to play the left side because they think it's cooler or they can be a little bit more aggressive or more of the alpha player, but being a good right side player is so valuable. And if you have a really solid right side player, your team is going to be so much better and it'll pay off. The perfect right side player does these five things. Super important. Make sure you stay until the end. Number one, letting your partner take the middle dink. Their forehand is going to be better than your backhand. So if you guys are both righties and you're on the right, you wanna let your partner take the middle. That's what a good right side player does. So the second thing a good right side player does is apply pressure as your partner is hitting his third. So if my partner hits a third, it's my job to move in and apply pressure. That rule does go both ways though. The third thing a right side player should do is be consistent. As a right side player, your job is to just be consistent and stay consistent. You don't wanna be making errors. On the right side, since you're only playing 40% of the court, you have more of a responsibility to make the ball. The fourth thing a perfect right side player should do is have some offense. You wanna be able to win points for, for your team and not just be a backboard. If you're able to apply offense, your opponents will be scared to hit you the ball as well. And if you're just making every shot, then your opponents can just hit you every shot and not have a worry in the world knowing that you're just gonna dink it and you're, and you're no threat. So you wanna be a threat on the right. The fifth aspect that makes a perfect right side player, and this is so important, and this kind of combines all of them, is you wanna play a supportive role. Your job as the right side player is to be there for your partner when they speed up. So if you're on the right and your partner speeds up, it's your job to be ready to, to put away the high ones. Like you're there to be supportive. You know, if your partner doesn't hit a great shot or doesn't hit a great speed up, your job is to reset that. And if, it's, if you get a tough ball, you know, reset that and have some solid defense. So you want to really just be supportive for your partner. You want to look out for their attacks. You want to look out for their bad shots and just know that as a right side player, you're there to help the left side player be the best they can be. And I know that kind of like puts us in the shadow a little bit when we play on the right. I feel that, but it's the way to win. I think it, it is the way to win. Even if the better player is on the right side, you still have to play a supportive role and you have a super important role to play and it's being a supportive partner. So I play the right side a decent amount of time. In this match, I'm going to be playing the right alongside Kwong Duong, and we're going to be playing Ben Johns and Colin Johns, a top five Ben's doubles team in the world. So they're, they're very good. Let's get into it. It's the first point of the match. And what's interesting about this match is we have our first round draft pick on the right. Usually you have the better or the more experienced player on the left, but for this match, I felt that Kwong was very comfortable on the left. So I was like, if he's very comfortable there, I'm comfortable on the right, let's, let's do this and see, see what, we, what we can do. Uh, and I missed that. Okay, so I missed a shot. That is not how to play the right side perfectly. I just wanted to, you guys to watch the first couple of points. So Ben and Colin have a two point lead now. Let's, let's see what we can do. As a right side player, or going into this match, I knew that I wasn't going to get a lot of the balls for the reason that I just said. Uh, Kwong's a little bit less experienced, so they're going to focus on him. As you can see, they're hitting almost every single ball to Kwong to test his dinking ability. And that's what a team that Ben and Colin are going to do uh, when they get a new player. I hit one dink. I know my job. Just make the dink. Colin tries to speed up. Kwong's on it. That's no go zone. No go zone. So now we're just, we're really just getting into the match. You can see what I did here, which is not the best thing to do from a right side player. We end up losing the point, but I look to be aggressive off Kwong's third, which is, as you'll see, a very important part of being a right side player, but it hits the net cord and I decide to take it because I think, you know, my partner might be far back. Let me take that. But now what I do is I'm completely out of position and 
Colin can easily hit the ball behind me. I make a pretty solid get, uh, but now we're just in a bad, now I'm out of position so Ben can attack a lot more spots. Making, so Kwong has to cover me. So once I do this, you know, Kwong has to cover a lot more court now and he's not ready for all the attacks. I make a solid get, we're into it. We lose the point, not specifically because of what I did, but if you're on the left side, you don't want to come over and take your partner's dinks. That's just like, you don't want to come far over and take it because then you're far out of position. And if you're a backhand, if you have a backhand, your shoulder's probably turned. Whereas if you're on the left side and you come over and take your partner's ball and you have a forehand, you can take it and you're, 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 you're still facing the net. You, you take the forehand and you're facing the net. Whereas if you take the backhand, I hit this and now like, I've got to do so much to get to the forehand. Whereas if I take a forehand, I hit the forehand and I'm already sitting on the next one. Here, not, not quite the same. So here, here's a good example of what a right side player should do at this point. So we get into the dinking. My job is to just make that dink right here. They're dinking to the middle and I'm letting Kwong take that middle dink because his forehand, because he can do more with his forehand than I can do with my backhand. And it's easy, you have more options with your forehand than you do with your backhand. Because if, you, if you're, if you hit your back and you're kind of limited, if you hit your forehand, Ben missed an missed a unusual dink there. Uh, but the thing is, if you have your forehand, you can kind of hit it farther behind you. You can do more with it. Whereas if you hit your back end, you're, you're, you have less options. And I, I think I have a solid back end, but I think Kwong's forehand in the middle is better than my back end. And that's why... When you're dinking, you want to let your partner take that middle dink. Uh, there, are exempt, there are exemptions that we'll talk about. So here's, here's a good example of what a right side player can do. Right there. I didn't execute this perfectly well, but we can go back and see. I probably didn't do the best here because Colin hits a really good deep return. And now what I'm doing is closing to apply pressure. If Kwong gets his third down or below the net, I can move in to decrease the margins that Colin has or decrease the, the area that my opponent can hit to. So if I'm here, I'm covering a lot of the court. So Colin kind of has to go here. I hesitated with this one and decided to take it a little late. I shouldn't have done that, but you know, warming up, people make mistakes. See, he hits behind me, which I'm there. Like it's, it's only one step to my forehand, so no problem. And we get into the point, Kwong, Kwong's an animal, rips the back end, covers the middle, great point, just great all around point. And you see right here off this lob, Kwong does what, Kwong does what the left side player is supposed to do, and that is get big in the middle off my drive. See, he covers that middle and hits a really good shot, puts away the next one. And I'm here to tell you that a good right side player can also do that. And if you're on the right side and you can, you can crash your partner's thirds and be aggressive and be big and intimidate your opponents, your, your opponent, you're going to get free points. You're going to get misses and it doesn't just work on, uh, doesn't just work on drives. It works on drops as well. So here's the replay. Great job Q. Now here's the next point. Boom. Just like that. Let's watch it again in slow-mo because it looks cooler. So Kwong rips, rips his third. And after the last point, I realized like, hey, you got to commit to the poach. So I'm already kind of leaning middle, but I know that going behind me is going to be very hard from that ball because it's low. So I, I lean middle and I'm able to hit a tennis style volley. It works with two hands. Some players are really good at that. Garnett does that well, where he can crash from the right with two hands. Uh, but I just went with the one-handed volley because in the moment it felt comfortable and it worked out. So 
And that's a free point. That, that's not only a free point, free point, but now they're scared. They're intimidated. They know that they have to hit better fourths. They have to hit better fourths. So that's, that's a big plus for us as a team. This next point is another example of what the right side player can do to help their team. And it's when I get the return hit to me, I drive it, allowing, look at that. Great job, Q. Uh, I, I hit a drive and you want to hit it 60 to 70%. You want to aim a few inches above the net and you don't want it. You just don't want to over hit it. It doesn't need to be hard. It just needs to be placed well. Uh, so that's what right side players can do is hit this shot to allow their partner to come over. It's the same thing I just did, but it's way more common here because the person on the left usually has their forehand in the middle, which means more reach and more power. So if I just drop it every single time, you know, we can get in, but we're not getting that many free points. And you want free points. You've noticed we've gotten a few free points and we, we actually have the lead right now against a top, a top double team, one of the best doubles team in the world. 7-4, let's go. Here's a cool point we can watch from the match. We're up 8-6. This is MLP, so it's rally scoring, meaning whether you're serving or receiving, you win a point. You don't have to win a point on your serve. A nice lob from Q. They get back into the point. Whew. Great coverage from Q again. Nice little ATP coverage and boom. So this is cool because you know, as a right side player, like you, you can do so much. I gotta, I, you have so much responsibility on the right. You know, I have to cover this ATP, which happens multiple times in this match and a lot of matches. And now I get a ball and instead of just always playing defense, I have the offense to rip that shot. And I chose a good spot because uh, Ben's covering, Ben is covering his line here. After this, he's, he's out of position a little bit. He, he, he leaves his line open. So he probably thinks I'm going there. I go middle. See, Ben was anticipating the, the line. We watched in a, in a late, in a, former video, how well Ben, ben anticipates, but you know, you're not always right. And in doubles, it's a little bit different than singles. Anyway, this, is, this was a cool point to watch. This point shows another important thing uh, players can do on the right side. And it's, it's right here. I don't know if you saw it, but let's watch the point. Q misses that, it's all good right there. So I'm even gonna slow this down just so we can see it, but I try, I'm trying to be aggressive and right there, Ben has a high ball. He hits it on my side of the court, but since I'm so close to the net, I know that's a hard shot for me to take. So what I do is I leave that for my partner that's behind me. And that's such a valuable lesson for both the left side and the right side. Uh, and now I move back, Q hits a good shot. So I move back in. Uh, Q moves a little bit quicker than he should to get to the net because he's now he's moving in the transition transition zone, which isn't good. You want to be still. See, I moved from about here to here. Kwong went from like here to here, which is all good. It's all good. Like we talked about this throughout the match, and he started doing it better and better. So this point is a little different than a lot of the previous points we've seen. Uh, we were up twelve eight, and now it's. 12, 11, uh, and we, so we've lost a handful of points. We were up by a decent amount. Some things haven't gone our way. So I actually play this point a little differently from the right side and you'll, you'll see why. Let's see if you can see it. I take that ball right there. That's a middle ball that usually I would let Kwong take. Whew. Another shot that I would usually let Q take. I let him take that one. I mean, it's very collaborative. Like we both need to know who's taking what balls, but I'm just, I'm trying to take a little bit of the middle to give them a different look. You see, I'm leaning middle. Q hits a great shot. So we were kind of leading that dink rally the whole time. And I think it's because we were giving them different looks. 
bend and call and want to get into a pattern. So by me taking some of those middle balls, uh, it, it gives your opponents a different look. Somebody who does this very well is Gabe Tardio. When he plays with Andre Deescu, he'll he'll take he'll move over the middle and he'll be aggressive from the middle on the right side. So you can do that from the right side. You need to find the time to do it when you're not shutting out your partner, but you're actually helping your partner. So your partner's moved up, moved off to the side and then you can be big. When it's time for you to move over, you got to stay on your side and let your partner be big. Uh, and it takes a good left side player to know how to work with your right side player. Another great right side player that I didn't mention was uh, Hayden Patrickin. He, does, he did this very well in the tournament he won with Federico Staxford. When he beat, uh, I think it was Ben and James, he was leaning over, on, he, was, he was playing the right, and he came over to the middle a lot and was just very, very aggressive there. No, the team he beat was, uh, they beat, they beat J-Dub and Dylan. That's a really good team to beat. So this works, this works, you know, it's a good strategy. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> So here's another point where Kwong gets the third and I, and you see me move in to be aggressive and apply pressure. Kwong rips it. I moved in once again, boom, boom shakalaka. Let's watch this again in slow-mo. Let's watch in 0.25. Whew. They're not there. Uh, Colin's sliding to the right. Ben can't cover that. And I mean, it's just a high shot that I was able to take. And you can see I don't do the tennis style volley anymore. I kind of do a like a swinging volley, a swinging one-handed backhand volley. And I mean, I did the easy part there. The hard part of that was Kwong hitting this great drive low into a perfect spot to get that ball. So, I mean, this, as you'll see, it's kind of just me supporting Kwong. Like that, the right, the right side is more of a supportive role, but if you can be the best support possible, everybody's gonna wanna play with you. So, and you'll be very good. Cause if you all only play the left side, if you start playing the right, you'll start to have a better understanding for pickleball in, gen in general. You'll start to have a better understanding of, okay, I usually play the left and now I'm playing the right. What does the right guy do? What is he looking for? And once you start to realize how a right side player thinks, when you go back to the left, the person in front of you is a right side player and you'll know more how the person in front of you is thinking and what they're covering, what they're trying to do. And that helped me a lot on my left side my left side got a lot better when I started working on my right side. So this next point right here, let's watch. We have a solid lead again, three points. Right there. So I just mentioned in the last point, playing a supportive role. Kwong takes a speed up from the middle. Good, it was a good speed up. Uh, wasn't too low, it was a decent height, it was about net level height. He goes into the chicken, or not chicken wing, into the, no, yeah, chicken wing of Ben. Ben can't get any power there, because he's, I think he's sitting on the back end. And I play the supportive role of, hey, I need to know my part, when my, I need to know my partner's looking to speed up. When he speeds it up, it's my job to put the next one away. It's my job to be ready for him to speed up. So you should never have your, your you should never have your paddle down. You always want to keep your paddle up and ready to hit hit a shot. Just watch it. Just watch it again in real time. Boom. So it's just great teamwork right there. I mean, this is this is probably one of the best matches. You can really see all the examples of what a good right side player should do and how they can be the best supportive role possible for the left side player. This next point's cool again, so let's watch it. Great drop, I'm looking to be aggressive. There, I'm looking to be aggressive. And unconventional miss right there, but we got two Ernie's in a row. You'll see that Kwong, let's, let's just watch this because it's so cool. 
It's, it's awesome. Right here, Quang gets, Quang hits a great drop. He gets kind of an easy dink. And instead of just hitting a dink, look what he does. Look, he rolls the heck out of it. Cross court, Ben's leaning middle. So that's a great spot to hit to. And now what my job is to see my partner hit a good shot and look to capitalize and take advantage of that, which I do with an Ernie. Uh, and then Quang goes for a pretty ambitious Ernie, not really an Ernie, but, and then we get a little lucky. I mean, that's the way it goes, but very, very cool point to watch. Very, very cool point to watch. I thought I'd include this point to give Ben some credit because Quang has been lobbing this match and it's been working. A little lob. <sighs> Just rips it through the middle. That's not an easy shot to hit. It's really not. You're, you've got to run behind you and now basically hit a 180 speed up. Uh, a 180 drive. He, just a 180 drive. Uh, and let's break this down to, say, to see like who's supposed to cover this shot. Just out of curiosity. Let's go here. So I think the problem is I'm a little close to middle, which could be, you know, throwing Q off. And the ball passes through his side and he's got the forehand in the middle. I'm ready for this because I know I'm ready for the ball to come here because it's because he hit it from the right side because Ben hit it from the right side of the court. It's kind of my job to cover middle if it goes cross court. Uh, which is what I'm ready for there. I, I know he's not really gonna rip it here, and I'll be ready. F I'll be ready for that if it comes. Uh, so I think Q was maybe ready for more body and even line, which he should be. Uh, I mean, another layer of it is Ben can't really go line because Colin's in the way. So I think Kwong was ready for the body. No, no worries. Neither one of us was expecting Ben to hit that shot. So I think that's that's where the real confusion comes in. Kudos to him. Another another awesome point uh, we can watch here. I play a pretty supportive role in this point. So as we can see, a lot of the balls are going to Q, which isn't always the case, but I had an opportunity. Let's go back. I had an opportunity to do something right there. Collins moved back, bends a few steps off the line. Kwong and I are both really close. And I get a high ball. I'm like, let me be aggressive and try and do something. It doesn't really work. Uh, we get a little, I don't hit the best shot, but I like the fact that, you know, I'm looking for that, looking to be aggressive. Once again, I'm trying to be aggressive when it's there. Uh, so this brings me to another thing that a right side player can do to be the best right side player they can be. Boom, right there. That was in. So I hit that shot. I tried to go for that shot, not only once, but kind of twice. I did it one, once with the backhand, a second time with the forehand. And they leave it up. Ben leaves it up just high enough off of a solid ding from Kwong. So, I mean, Kwong needs to hit a a good dink or I mean sometimes they'll just pop it up but Kwong hit a good dink for me to look to be aggressive to go middle nobody's there because a winner through the middle it's harder to figure out who's covering that it's Ben's job to cover the forehand because it's in the middle so so this is a good point to watch to show you guys where a right side player can speed up the ball So, Colin hits a drop. It is a little high. I know Ben isn't super close to the net. So what I can do is I can take that and I can speed up cross court or speed up, speed up down the line and keep it low. If I keep it low, Ben isn't going to be able to do much with that backhand. And what he does is, I mean, he hits it right into the strike zone, right into the windmill, windmill forehand of Kwong Duong. And 
Kwong just rips it. Colin could have made that reset, but it was not an easy ball. Good point from us. Uh, and this point gives us the 18-14 lead uh, against a really solid team. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include this just because I've, I've talked about it. Watch. Boom. That's three times this match where I've been aggressive or I've crashed and been aggressive off my partner's thirds. Two of them have been drives. This one was a drop. You can see, I mean, Kwong hits a great drop and Ben is trying to keep Kwong back, keep Kwong back. And what I can do to help him out is boom, take over that. Let's watch it again and let's put it in slow-mo. So it's this, I'm already moving. I see that the ball is dropping and here I'm anticipating that he's gonna go there. If Ben would have rolled it behind me, he may have hit a winner, but I, had, I knew that Ben was gonna try and go cross court. I'm moving one step, luckily I'm tall. Nobody's there, nobody's there. Big point, big point. We just talked about how beneficial it is to crash your partner's thirds. Now let's watch a point where it's not as beneficial. So. So right here, as we can see, Huang hits a drive and I'm already crashing. So this is the risk you get or the con of blindly crashing is Huang hits his third a little high where, so if he hits it high, I'm, I'm vulnerable to attacks. So he hits it high and Colin just crushes it at me. I get it back. Ben hits a, and then I get it back, but it's high. Now I'm in a bad position and I can't make another one. So it's a super great play if your partner hits the third low and well. If he hits it high, it's not great. So you, there's that trust and balance of knowing when your partner's gonna hit a good shot. You can't always watch to see if he hits a good shot and then crash. You kind of just have to trust your partner and crash at the same time. So here's a cool point to watch. Uh, ben and Colin are making a little bit of a comeback. We've had a solid lead and I think we've lost one or two points in a row now. Good defense from us. You can see that they are focusing most of their shots on Huang. I get one dink and what I do is I decide to go behind Ben, keeping him honest. Yeah, yeah. So, second time he said an ATP, that was just too good of a shot. Kwong's, Kwong hit his back end roll and it bounced here. If it bounces here, it's gonna go way out, way out and open up the ATP. Whereas if you dink more here in this corner, it's going to go push him back and the ATP is gonna be much harder, which we talked about, it's no secret. They're making a comeback. And they even take the lead, 22, 22 all. A couple of not the best points. Uh, Colin gets called for a foot fault. Right here, you can see it. That was a big point. You'll see why that's so important. He got called for a fit, foot fault at 23, 22. That would have put him at 24, 22. I do a really dumb job. Uh, so I do a really dumb thing right here. Kwong hits a drop and I did this as one, I did this in one of the first points of the match and I came all the way over to take a dink. And I know I shouldn't do that, but in the moment I'm ready to, I'm ready for a high one to put away and he hits it low and I'm like, oh, I'm already there. So I just, it was like, let me just hit the dink and go back. But as you can see, I, I hit this dink. I hit that dink and now I'm trying to recover. I'm leaving all this core open. He goes across my body, I make it but he just puts away the next one. And now I have Kwong out of position because of my not great choices. I, I kind of lost that point for us, but we live and we learn. So, so here's a really big point. I think it says 24, 24, but it's actually 25, 24 match point, match point for Ben and Colin. We've been losing some points, so, you know. Oh my goodness. Oh, a few net courts. 
what a lob. So we lose the point. We lose the point. But he gets called for football. Look at this. I mean, first of all, Kwong's hit a lot of a few lobs this match and it worked. But this one lob, I mean, he's hitting on his back foot. He had a forehand lob from the left side on his back foot. The fact that it worked out was an inch, an inch. Look at that. Look at his foot. Oh, man. And then Kwong misses this shot. And we lose. But he gets called. That was crazy. We saved a match point. Crazy. So now it's 26-26. This is a huge point of the match. I mean, it, MLP is first to 25, win by two. Not the best return, but I'll take it. Wow. Oh, man, look at these gets. Kwong was just back, so I was like, let me help him out with that one. Uh, huge plays from Q. Let's go. Let's just watch this point again. I mean, this right here, that right there, that first shot from Ben. Oh, that could have been it. Uh, and then the ATP. ATPs are not easy. Are not easy to get. Gets a high ball. Another crazy get from Q. Great drive from Q. We get in. So Q was off his back foot. So Q hit this last one. Look how far back he is. He's leaning back. And I see that. And I'm like, all right. He... And before I even know what Q's doing, I know he's back here. I see Colin going for the drop shot. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm there. Because it could be a really good drop shot. It wasn't the best drop shot. But if it was really good, I've, I've got him beat by a little bit. And if I get that, I'm there with control. When Kwong gets there, he's, he's got to run through that to hit a drop. It's a lot easier for me because I can already be stable with my body by the time I get that. And then dinking. Big shot. Big speed up from Q. Big speed up from Q. He sped up below the net a few times, but in these, in these points, he, he picked some great shots to speed up. So now we have a match point. So here's our, I believe this is our first match point. Kwong just ripped this serve. Look at the, look how hard he goes for it. How much he goes for it. Which is crazy to do that on match point. And then there, big shot. Oh man, the, like there's a lot of pressure in this moment. And for Q to be able to play and just not care about the score, not care about the team he's playing and just, you know, play his game, kudos to him. So, you know, I didn't really do anything at this point, but let's go. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy this type of content, I have a ton more breakdowns, match analysis, where I talk through the match and hopefully you learn a thing or two. That would be great. If you don't know by now, I I started a newsletter. Subscribe to it to you know get weekly updates every week about what's going on, what new content's out there. You're gonna get first-hand comments from me about the week and just a bunch of cool stuff, you know, quotes from my coach, just other players, just it's gonna be a great, great source of information to keep you updated. On top of that, I give away one paddle every month to somebody who is subscribed to my YouTube channel and my newsletter. So you gotta make sure you're subscribed to both of those to be eligible, eligible for the paddle. So having your email and being able to directly message you is going to be awesome. Make sure you don't send me any credit card information, anything like that. Be careful for scams out there. All I'm going to ask, ask for is your address. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vid and maybe learned a thing or two. You can click one of these videos, YouTube thinks you'll like it. Have a good one.